Every year, we learn more about our past as human beings. And a new discovery in Indonesia might mean that our past is much older than we thought. Archaeologists are amazed and excited by the discovery of prehistoric cave art recently found in Indonesia. Cave art being studied by Griffith University academics Adam Brum and Max Orbert could be the oldest ever discovered. It shows this incredible hunting scene which might have spiritual connotations. The big concern now is that the Sulawesi artwork could vanish. It's a real tragedy. This image is, is peeling away off the wall, essentially. It's flaking off. They could be gone within our own lifetime. Uh, so stop touching it. <laughs> this art lasted 44,000 years, and then these guys show up like, oh, no, it's in danger. Huh? Look at that. <laughs> it's just chipping away. Look, when I scratch it, it comes right off. We gotta do something, mate. Bring the sandblaster. <laughs> you know what I really love about discovering ancient art in a cave? is that it shows that cavemen were more creative than we think, and also shows that they didn't give a shit about their security deposit. Yeah, they're just like, screw it, we got no heat, no water, I'm drawing on the walls. <laughs> and I'm always impressed that scientists can date exactly how old these paintings are. You know, it must be like a really crazy chemical analysis, or they just saw it in the background of one of Bernie Sanders' childhood photos. It could be that, <laughs> it could be that. He was seven there. <laughs> but let's move on to high school proms. It's that time of the year when young people work up the courage to get rejected by someone who didn't even know they exist. <laughs> and for one young man, his prom proposal took a really unexpected turn. A Carson City teen regained the full use of his hand, but it came at the expense of another one of his body parts. Doctors detached Aiden Atkins' index toe and used it to recreate a thumb. Aiden says he wasn't able to use the thumb. He sawed off. Well, because he couldn't find it. He lost his thumb trying to make his girlfriend an invitation to prom. Aiden says the accident happened so fast that he didn't have time to react. He says he's thankful it wasn't much worse. God has a plan for everything. He, he does it for a reason. There's, there's a story for everybody, and, and I believe that this is my story. Wow. Yo, man, kudos to that guy. That is an amazing story. Like, I'm glad the doctors were able to give him his hand back, and I'm genuinely impressed at his great attitude. Like, he had to replace his thumb with a toe. But he's still like, you know what? Life goes on. <laughs> yeah. I get a pimple on my forehead, and I'm like, I'm gonna die! <laughs> Don't look at me! <laughs> and guys, you gotta admit, science is amazing. Cause I didn't know doctors could put your toe on your hand and it would work as a finger. Cause that basically means that our toes are replacement fingers. Right? Yeah, you know what it's like? It's like when a shirt comes with extra buttons sewn in. <laughs> That's what God designed. If we lose a finger, we can just be like, oh, well, seven more to go. <laughs> and in some ways, it might even be better having some of your fingers be toes, you know? Like, now you can get a mani-pedi at the same time. Just... <laughs> and by the way, what an upgrade for that toe. Can we admit that? Yes? <laughs> I bet all the other toes must have thrown it a huge going away party, just like, did you hear? Middle toe's moving up to the big time. He's gonna be a finger. <laughs> yeah! Don't forget us when you're holding things, Mitty. Don't forget us. <laughs> He's like, I'll come back, guys. I'll help you clip your nails, and I'll tell you what the inside of a nose looks like. Yay! <laughs> I actually wonder if this works for other parts of the body, because I'm fascinated now. Like, can you use a leg as an arm? or can use a knee as a shoulder. I mean, it must be possible to swap parts because Donald Trump uses a vagina as a neck. I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's just like, sometimes I grab me by the pussy. All right, and finally, Christmas is just around the corner. And apparently for parents, there's a fun new holiday tradition. Have you ever had your kids pose for pictures on Santa's lap? Smiles all around, right? Didn't think so. Mark Strassman met a photographer in Atlanta who embraces the holly and the not-so-jolly. This is photographer Jeff Rothman's studio. In here, a white Christmas often turns blue. We have parents come in here hoping their kids will cry, uh, and, and they leave disappointed if their kids don't. Run, everybody, run, run, run. Rothman was floored parents wanted their kids to cry. <laughs> he had 7,000 photo shoots available over six weeks. They sold out in 10 minutes. Okay, that is so mean. <laughs> parents are making their babies cry just so that they can get a cool-looking picture? You know what I hope? I hope those kids get revenge. I hope in 40 years, they drop their parents off at a nursing home and then take pictures of them crying while the Jamaican nurse <laughs> is holding them back. 
Yeah, that's what that should be. Just have their parents on the nurse lap, like just crying, they're like, don't leave me with this lady, I don't even know who she is. And be like, her name's Karma, bitch. And she'll be like, actually, my name's Gladys, but you're right, your daddy's a little bitch. <laughs> this is a great example of how parents make their kids do things that they say they shouldn't do. Because parents are always like, strangers are dangerous. If you ever feel uncomfortable, run away. And the kid's like, I'm uncomfortable now. Shut up, I'm trying to get a photo, Timmy. <laughs> like, this whole practice of sitting on an old man's lap to get presents is weird to me. That's why I'm not gonna let my kids sit on Santa's lap. If my kids want presents, they can do it the old-fashioned way by fighting to the death on Black Friday.